What do you want for lunch, man? Um, who's getting it? The intern? This clown? What is up, Internet world, and welcome back to Accelerate. My name is Mike, and the man behind the camera is Ian, and today we're bringing the 2023 Volvo XC60 Recharge. This is the 2023 Volvo XC60 Recharge. What Recharge means is you have a hybrid vehicle with a little battery to take you to the grocery store and maybe your office and back. 58 kilometers of range, that is great, but what is more important to us here at Accelerate is that you subscribe. We are on the road to a million subs and we are close, if not past 180,000 subs by the time you watch this video. So please go ahead and smash that red button to match the color of this Volvo. Now why this is important is because our last Volvo XC60 video has over half a million views. And that to me is a big surprise until you get behind the wheel of one and you realize it's actually pretty darn good. Now the recharge gives you so much power that when you're driving it, you just tap the throttle and this thing flies. It makes more power than an Audi SQ5. It's actually faster and well, subjectively, maybe better looking. So for all you subjective folks, you can comment below because this thing's made in China. Gone is a supercharged and turbocharged motor. They now solely have a turbocharged four-cylinder. Whoo, baby. That makes 455 horsepower and 523 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to an eight-speed transmission. Let's get into the drive modes quickly. Driving. I actually have to go in the actual menu and hit some buttons, and then voila, I have five different drive modes, but the most important ones are hybrid. Obviously, that picks which it wants to put and use. Then you have power, which is what I want to be in right now. That puts both the electrification and the engine at full jam. Then you have pure, that's solely electrification. And then under that, you have battery usage, which is auto, hold, and charge. I'm gonna pick hold. So power and hold, foot to the ground. Oh, baby, a lot of power. One, two, three, go. That's just really quick. Okay, 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 we got 4.69, which I actually, first to second shifted very, very low, like at like, sound like 3,000 RPM. I guess it knows when to shift. I'm gonna have to try that again because I'm gonna get to the, let's say like 4.5. One, two, three, go. Okay. Yes. First second shifts like very low. 4.57. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I feel like I can get four. Oh my god. With summer with summer tires, the right setup, definitely I can get this thing to 4.4 something for sure. That is quick. To the front of the all-new Volvo XC60 recharge. Now you'd like to know there are nine different exterior colors a dark theme and a bright theme, but this has the dark theme. All black trim everywhere, nice bold grill. So if we focus on the headlights, this has the Thor style design, like pretty much every other Volvo out there. I also find the design of the headlight housing, the way the hood and the bumper form, creates this Jaguar style design. Looks really good. The way this hood forms through to all meet right at the front. It's very Jaguarish. It's a long hood and aggressive from the front. I think Volvo really nailed the styling on this XC60. Now Volvo has changed the names of their trim. No longer is our design momentum and inscription. It is now core plus and ultimate. Because when I look at this, all I think about is the R design, all this black and these aggressive lower front skirting of the front bumper. It's pretty aggressive and it's, I don't know, some people say they don't like the design of this, but I really do like Volvo. It's just clean and they do have a tiny bit of flair. It's kind of how the older Audis used to be. My opinion. Now here's a fun fact about Volvos. It's not the engine, it's the hood. Watch this, I let go. And look how high this hood goes. It is wild. It is pretty much the same as every Volvo we've ever reviewed. It's nice and high. It's designed for a mechanic. It's not for a consumer because a consumer is generally not six foot six and can pull this thing down. I have to actually like kink this hood a little bit and then now I can grab it and close it. Now to the side. 
You can see that they have this little indentation on the front to give it a bit more flourish of a look. You've got 22 inch fancy wheels. They have black with this aluminum polished finished on the front. We are rocking winter tires because it is snowy out there. Now, as we push down to the side, you can see you have a black finished mirror cap. You also have this little strip of LED, so when you indicate it, it flashes. You've got your camera hiding underneath there. And to add more black to it, you have black trim here, and it flows up the top. And right here, you can see it is actually pivoted out. It's different than the EX90 all electric. And moving up from there to continue its dark theme, you have black roof rails. Of course, you get black tinted windows. That's pretty typical when you buy any SUV in North America. They tint them for the kitties in the back and introduce the sun exposure into the vehicle. Now, when the keys in your pocket, you can walk up to the vehicle front and back and simply lock and unlock it by touching this and putting your hand here and it will unlock. Now, moving below, you have these flared out lower side skirts. Here is where you put your gasolina and I will tell you that it takes premium fuel only. Putting regular gas is a no-no in a Volvo. It does have air suspension and it looks so sick when you have it in entry exit mode because when you want to get into it, it lowers itself, but sick. I love the way it looks when it's slammed. This is how Volvo station wagons are supposed to be, except this is an SUV. To the back of the Volvo XC60 Recharge. Now it's slammed all the way down that it actually looks like a wagon and this is why I love Volvos. So you start at the top here, you have your shark fin, you have a really, really long third brake light. You'd have this little tiny cute little spray nozzle that sprays on the back of your darkened out windshield. Then you have the Volvo and then you have this fancy T8 all-wheel dive recharge right there, letting everybody know that you are the big baller T8 XC60. And then of course you have a little camera hiding underneath here with some LED lights and of course a button to open up this power tailgate. And then moving down from there, you have your Parktronic sensors and then more black trim. This is new, this is fancier than the XC60 reviewed and I really like the way this looks. It makes it look wide, sleek and lower when you have this rear valence. Front seat of the Volvo XC60 recharge. Great seats. These are massage seats and they have leg extensions. Your bolsters can tighten up and you have lumbar. I don't have any sort of fancy writing on my headrest. It doesn't tell me that it's recharged. I just have to sit in here and guess. We've got two memory seats, four windows that are fully automatic. Of course, you have massive, massive storage space for more than just a Powerade. Probably five Powerades. That's how much room you have in the bucket of this door panel. You only have this aluminum grill on the Bowers and Wilkins on the top, not on the bottom. And then when you look at the dash, you do have a nice, fairly sized heads-up display, a driver's display, and then of course, your nine-inch vertical. To the left and right of it, you have big monster vents, very nice and clean. And then you have this wood trim with some full chrome all the way around. And then you have your volume knob, with your skipping tracks. And then your nice and high center console, you have more full wood that you can simply slide back to uncover two cup holders and a little storage compartment along with a cigarette lighter. And there you have your Oroforos from Sweden, which is backlit at night, which is nice and fancy. And then you have your park button, your start and stop that you simply twist, which is pretty much the same as most Volvos. And then you have your electromechanical parking brake and then your auto brake hold. Now, how much storage is there on the center console? Well, it's nicely padded. I will tell you that. So your elbow is nice and safe. But as far as storage, it's not very deep. If I took this Powerade and I showed you, voila, that's how much depth you have. You do have two USB-C's. So here are my three issues that I have with the Volvo XC60 that also exists with other Volvos. So here they are. The first one is there is no wireless charging in this specific model in 2023. There's also this problem I have when you want to change the temperature in here. You just have this little tiny button on the bottom you have to hit and then it opens up something and then voila, then you can adjust it. But you have to hit this little tiny buttons down here. They're not only buttons are on the screen itself. So you just basically have this little parameter you have to put your fingers through. And if you miss it, well, guess what? It's not doing anything sometimes. And there is voila. See, I have to kind of put my finger all the way down here and then let do one of these. And that can get irritating. And then the last one is there is no wireless CarPlay. It's just wired, which is fine. But still, I mean, wireless CarPlay, come on. It's 2023 Kia. I'm also talking to you as well as you, Hyundai. Back seat of the Volvo XC60. Ooh, nice, beautiful Napa leather. So Napa leather is not new, but Napa leather is very soft to touch and very slippery, but feels very premium at the same time. It's very black in here, which is weird because you'd expect a black roof 
but there's no. It's actually great. This has 15 speaker Bauer and Wilkins. And the 15 speakers are pretty much in the ceiling. There's these small little speakers on the headliner. There's four of them. And then, of course, each door has two, and the front has a center speaker, nice and fancy, Bauer and Wilkins. But how about the door panel? How does that feel? It feels pretty premium. Again, a lot of black. The only thing that isn't black are the speaker grills and the door handle. Everything else is black. Very, very, like, bland if you ask me but it's pretty standardized stuff and still holds some premium character behind it vents there's nothing in the center console they are on the b pillar here left and right it's good visibility back here because these headrests aren't huge they're nice and tapered in so i can see in front of me pretty well it has a nice big panoramic sunroof which i do enjoy because the glass goes all the way to here so behind my head Vehicles out there actually aren't always like this. They actually stop right here sometimes. That makes me feel a little bit more claustrophobic, but not in the specific case. Thumbs up Volvo. I do have a little map light. And of course I do have cup holders right here. When I push that in, I have nice two big cup holders and then a center pass. When I pull this down, you can fold this in and then you can put skis right through. It does have heated seats left and right. And of course there is two USB C's, no USB. And that is the back seat. So let's hit the button on the back of this Volvo XC60. Decently fast, but check this out. When I close it, listen to the impact it makes. It's like no double or like, it's like boom. I like it. Strong Volvo. So how much room do you have in the back of this Volvo XC60 recharge? To the back of the second row, you have 39 inches to the front of the sill. And as far as width goes, you have, open up measuring tape, you've got 45 and a half inches. Now, what about storage underneath the cargo panel? Not a whole lot. When I lift this up, that is where the battery is hiding. There is no room to put anything there. Now, you get this fancy little mat from Volvo that you can buy in their parts department, I assume. And you get this little stainless steel sill on the back. You have two buttons here. That is to adjust your air suspension to go up and down to make the load floor lower so you can easily put stuff in the back of your Volvo. And again, this is very station wagon-ish. Not really SUV at all. How about other things? Well, you have a 12-volt plug there, a little bit of storage with a light on both both sides, no light on top. And then of course you can fold your seats down, but nothing in the back to do so. You have to actually reach over and then do one of those. It electronically folds down, at least the headrests do. And then voila, it's a little bit of a task. Come on, come on, come. It's a little bit of a task. So now I'm in pure mode, which is basically just electrification on having the electric motors only working. And because they are only in the back, this becomes completely rear wheel drive. So when I go around corners and I hit the gas, it actually fishtails. I get the back end to come out every single time, but the stipulated program kicks in, so it doesn't want to fishtail totally, but it's 100% rear wheel drive, which is so cool. Oh man, that's funny. It's like a rear wheel drive little fun toy. And it's super quiet in here. This doesn't have dual pane front windows. They're just solely a single pane, which when you see other vehicles that are more luxurious, especially at this price point, they always have the front windows that are dual pane, but this one doesn't have it, but it's super quiet in here. So how long does it take to charge? Is it like the Mitsubishi where it has super fast level three charging? The answer is no. It only has level two charging, which gives you five hours of plug-in time to get this 58 kilometers which basically is about 33 miles or so, or 35 miles, depending on I guess, where you live and temperatures outside and all this fun stuff. But if you plug in at home, it takes about nine hours to fully charge, just to let you guys know, depending on you know how your distance is to go to work. Now, the other thing is that if you put your address in the GPS, it'll calculate and understand when it should be in hybrid mode, which means when it should be in electric and when it should be in gas. It actually knows that, because if you're sitting on the highway, it won't suck up all your battery power. It'll wait until you get to smaller, slower roads for it to activate. So when I plugged it in last night, what I did notice is it does not have a timer, which means when I plug it in, it immediately starts to charge. It doesn't actually give me a choice to actually start charging in two hours or at 4 a.m. or whatever to save on electricity. I couldn't do it. You plug it in, it charges right away. So for those that are conscious about charging on off-peak rates, well, you can't have it in your Volvo you have to probably maybe set an external 
timer that it puts the power on and then voila, you get power to your Volvo. But you can't choose it in the vehicle. You know what else I love? These seats and how quiet and good this is to drive. It's very comfortable. Now this has air suspension, I will say. It is expensive, I will say, but it drives very well. It's a great all around SUV. I love the way it looks. It's very clean. It's not super flashy. So if you had big dollars in your bank account, you don't want everybody to know. Well, if you drive a Volvo, nobody will know. Well, maybe some people that really know cars would be like, that is an expensive Volvo. But really, it's just sort of understated a little bit. Now these hybrids are the best of both worlds because you have electrification that you can solely put on or you can have both by pressing the power button or when you need it for the ground. It's just got instant little boost here, which is so nice to have. It's like instant power, instant power. Now you don't get that instant power when you're in pure. You have to have the power mode where the engine's running and then the electrification just kicks it on. And because it's rear wheel drive, you get that little nice bump, which is sweet. Turning radius is excellent and visibility is great. The infotainment's just a bit iffy for me. I'm not a huge fan of Volvo's infotainment. I find that there's just too many buttons to hit and the climate control just gets really annoying when you have to hit it. It's just it's a really small thing on the bottom. I've hammered that enough, but I will complain that that's nothing I don't like, something I don't like. So that's the review on the Volvo XC60 Recharge. I hope you guys like it. Hopefully it's as good as the first one and got all those views. If not, well, hey, subscribe on the next one. Maybe the next one will be better. We'll catch you on the next one.